Hi guys, welcome to Practice English with Paul, me, Paul Newson. So today, this video is about question tags, and this is a pain in the ass thing to explain. But this video was requested, so I decided to do it anyway. Now, question tags are very easy to sort of understand, they're very easy to explain, but to make students use these effectively is very difficult. For me personally, as a teacher, if a student can use question tags very naturally, for me, that is a sign of a good control of English. But, you know, even advanced students can sometimes have problems with using these correctly. Why? Well, question tags are culturally specific to the English-speaking world, so they might not be so uh, prominent in other languages as much. So, for example, in Britain, where I'm from, um, it's not so polite to strongly disagree with someone. So quite often, you know, if I ask a question, I often expect the person to agree with me, even if it's not true, because it's polite. Um, and that's one of the things that you sort of need to understand. Also, when we ask a question, like in a sort of rhetorical sense, um, we expect people to uh, respond with an answer. So it's like pushing someone to give us an answer. And that's what question tags are mainly for. The difficulty is there are different ways the intonation should go and that can change the meaning of what you're trying to say. So it's very important to be correct and that's why it's difficult. But I'll kind of give you a brief um, introduction to question tags and I'll give you some references at the end of this video. So let's have a look. Question tags, we use auxiliaries like have, was, will, do, does, did and I'll explain at the end, aren't I or am I not? Let's start off with the first one. So we've got like positive, our auxiliaries or verbs in the positive and the question tag in the negative, always after a comma. So the first one we have, Paul was drunk yesterday, wasn't he? So the intonation has to go up. By doing this, I'm actually asking a real question because maybe I'm not sure about it and I need someone to respond to say yes he was or no he wasn't. So again, Paul was drunk yesterday, wasn't he? I think he was because he drank about 10 pints and about 5 bottles of vodka. Next one, you can sing, can't you? Again, the intonation goes up one more time. You can sing, can't you? So maybe if you think about a situation where I need someone to sing in a band that I've just formed, like a heavy metal band, and I want to know if that person can sing or not, and I'm not sure. So I might say, you can sing, can't you? I'm sure I heard you sing before. Well, actually, yes, I can sing very well. Personally, I sing like a chicken that's slowly dying. I can't sing to save my life, but it doesn't matter. That's another story for another day. Um, but where it gets interesting is when the intonation goes down or is flat, like in these two examples. Um, and again, I've got my positive verbs and I've got my negative auxiliaries. For example, that is a really rubbish film, isn't it? Now, pay attention again to the intonation. That is a really rubbish film, isn't it? I'm not saying isn't it. If I say, isn't it, it becomes a question. If the intonation goes down or is flat, I'm expecting you to agree with me. Maybe we were in the cinema together, we both thought the film was rubbish, we're having a conversation, and I say, the film is really rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, it is, totally rubbish, even if you don't think it is. Uh, another one, he really annoyed us, didn't he? Again, I've got my past simple verb, and I have my uh, past simple auxiliary, did or didn't. Of course, we've got the negative. So again, I'm expecting you to agree with me. So imagine I was really drunk yesterday and Paul really annoyed us, didn't he? Yes, he did. He was really annoying, singing like a chicken that's slowly dying all night long. Um, so this, pro this probably is the most common one we use for question tags, where the intonation is flat or goes down a bit because I'm trying to get you to respond by agreeing with me. Oh, it's a nice day, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Um, or, for example, um, let me give another one. Um, uh, I think that will be a really interesting uh, project, won't it? Absolutely, totally interesting. Again, I'm expecting you to agree. Now we'll go to uh, the third one. What we do here, we actually put the negative first and the positive at the end for our question tag. When you do this, uh, this could also be a polite question. And actually, to ask a, que a question in this form is very, very polite. It could also be that you're trying to get information from someone. Um, and so, for example, if I say, you haven't seen Paul, have you? And again, the intonation goes up. You haven't seen Paul, have you? I'm trying to elicit uh, information from you. So you would answer, no, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him this week because he was drunk all night long. Uh, and again, another example. You don't know what the time is, do you? This would be a very polite question. Now, if you said, could you please tell me the time? Polite. 
tell me the time, rude. If you said, uh, you don't know what the time is, do you? It's creating distance and it's very, very polite. And you're eliciting someone to respond. So you don't know what the time is, do you? Yes, it's about 3.30. But again, this one's interesting. Um, now, this is not in many textbooks, but I've included it for you. When the intonation goes down or is flat, it's like sort of asking a question, but I know the answer. And imagine a situation if I'm speaking to a child, and I know they have or haven't done something, but I want them to answer, uh, to agree with me, then I would use this. So imagine if I say, you haven't done your homework, have you? You haven't done your homework, have you? Bad boy. No, I haven't. Um, that's how we would use it like this. Another example, you don't know, do you? Like, uh, I ask a student a question, oh, I know the answer. You don't know, do you? Come on, be honest. Um, then I'm asking in such a way, because I know what the answer is, I just want them to respond. Um, and this is very, very common as well. Again, if I change the intonation here, it becomes a question. You haven't done your homework, have you? Uh, yes, I have actually, it's finished. So as you understand, it's so important to get the intonation right because you're either asking a question or you're trying to say, I know the answer, I need you to agree with me. Just to sort of finish off, if we start with uh, the imperative, say negative, like don't be late, we always uh, have the question tag will. Don't be late, will you? And again, the intonation in this structure is always flat. Don't be late, will you? Don't forget, will you? Uh, don't forget to tell me what time you're leaving, will you? Um, a very, very common structure in English, it's very, very common. And also, if we have let's, we finish with shall, and the intonation must go up because it's always a question. So, uh, let's get drunk, shall we? Let's go to the cinema, shall we? Sure, let's do it. I'm, I'm, I'm up for it, why not? Um, so, you're always eliciting an uh, answer because it is a question, not because you want somebody to agree. Now, just to finish with aren't I, this is a sort of interesting thing because if you watch like Games of Thrones or these old-fashioned TV series, you might hear, I am the king, am I not? Like, am I not? Which would be the sort of old-fashioned correct form of a question tag with I. But actually, in everyday English, we say, aren't I? Like, I'm a teacher, aren't I? <laughs> yes, you are. You are a teacher. I'm strange you forgot. Um, and again, it's a very, very common structure. So guys, I strongly suggest, let me just show you the book that you can use. If you go to Unit 52 of Murphy's, which is famous by the way, there's a lot of practice in this book. It's a very good book for question tags. Um, I strongly recommend it. But what I would do is, when you go through the exercises from Murphy's, make sure that you, you know, fill in the answers and repeat each question and answer about five times to practice that you know, intonation, to practice that model answer so you can use it in your everyday English. But again, do I expect students to use these fluently after this lesson? No. It takes a long time. You'll need to watch a lot of real English to get a feeling for question tags. But again, it's a nice introduction to show you what they are and how they work. But again, guys, remember, it's very culturally specific. So that, that's why it takes a long time to learn. If you thought that video was very useful, please leave a uh, comment, thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, get your cats and dogs to subscribe as well. Guys, today it's my Christmas day, it's the 25th of December, and I'm working, but I don't mind because I'm happy to make videos for everyone, trying to make you feel guilty. I'm not. Otherwise, guys, have a very nice Christmas if you're celebrating, and have a fantastic new year, and I'll see you very, very soon, guys. Bye-bye.